Hi everybody and welcome back to Route 7 Railway. I hope you had a great Christmas and I'm wishing you all uh, an excellent 2023. Okay, very quick introduction. Um, this is a video of whether I can save this. Uh, this was a, a bargain on eBay and it's a, back, a basket case. It, does, it doesn't run, well it does run a little bit but it's, you'll see in the video, basically it's a non-runner. So either is it a basket case or a bargain that can be saved. So that's what's next. And just a very quick mention about the Hornby uh, new releases this year. And all I'm going to say is for me, the standout thing was the DCC control system and all the new decoders and sound decoders, a game changer as far as I'm concerned. On the strength of that, I've actually cancelled an order for a DCC control system because I was, end I was going to be paying 300 and odd pound for a controller when now free controller download, free sound downloads, chips that can be used on any, on any make of loco. You can still use your old kit if you've already got DCC. It's going to save me a fortune and it looks fantastic. I already used the HM6000 analog controller and that's great. And this is going to be 10 times better. So fantastic Hornby. You saved me a lot of money and I'm really excited to see that stuff come out. So let's get to the video. It'll be a attempt at repairing this and there'll be a running session at the end of it. So see you soon. Bye. I recently put together a small collection of diesel rail cars and this is one of the Lima ones. It's the parcels one. I've got two two passenger ones and two parcel ones all in different liveries. I've got the, I think the other parcel one I've got is a Briar Green. Now this one makes a bit of a racket. So let me just put it on the track and get it going. Right, so let's get this running and just see what it sounds like. And that is on full power, by the way. It's not good there. A couple, I got this as a bit of a bargain, so I'm happy with it. It's, a, it's in reasonable shape. It's got no hooks on the couplings, but I'm not bothered about that. I, in fact, I might even remove them completely so that they don't spoil the line of the model itself. But I need to get into this and find out what the problem is. So let's say uh, remove the body. I'll most probably speed this up to save uh, any problems with boredom. Now on these, you have to take the buffers out and undo two screws in there. So let's get a little save for me bits. I have cleaned the wheels already, as you can most probably see. It's got traction tires on it, which may be awful. It's getting on a bit this, because even the uh, retaining screws on this body shell have got rusty heads. I'll give them a little word, see? Rusty heads. Screw out. I think it just might need a clean. I can clean that up any time. Decent waste that's been fixed in. Let's see if we can get this motor out. Just looking at the drive here and it looks very dry but it's, it turns quite well let me see it's trying to turn but it's not having any so let's take this to bits what I'm going to do is take the brushes out and the springs
Now that's the commutator and that's filthy. So we're going to be cleaning that up. So lighter fuel is my fluid of choice for cleaning, especially electrical stuff like this. It evaporates really quickly and leaves no residue. And a little bit of assistance from a fiberglass pen on the commutator works a treat. Let's address these cogs. Right, these cogs are held in with a small nut and I would usually use a nut spinner. Uh, there's, you can just see the small red thing there, um, but it just wasn't the right size. So I'm, I'm reduced to using carefully a pair of pliers on the small nut that's holding those cogs on. So what you have to do sometimes is look at the, the gap between the individual teeth and every now and again you might see one with a, a bit of plastic flashing in there so the tooth doesn't interact properly. Okay, be really careful here that you don't over tighten those nuts on those uh, cogs. It won't affect the cog, but it will strip the thread where the nuts holding them on. Okay, now it's time to refit the brushes and the springs. And it's, it's this point you need to be really careful because if you, if you mishandle those springs, they will spring off your fingers and they will enter the fifth dimension and you'll never see them again. So be very careful and take your time. Now, let's see if we can get some life out of that. Okay, so let's test that. Now, that's quite good for a lemur motor. Okay, welcome back. Uh, what I noticed before when I run this for the first time after the service, it was running much better than before, nice and quiet, smooth, but it was running slower in one direction than the other, and the overall speed wasn't there either. I couldn't get to the bottom of it, so I decided to replace the springs and brushes with new ones, and if you look now, it's made all the difference. And that is a result. So I'm really pleased with that. I'm going to test run this with the other ones downstairs on the layout 
and so you can see all uh, the little collection running. Bye bye for now. Hi everybody and welcome back to Route 7 Railway and the train room. Wishing you all a happy new year. So I've uh, recently just done a, a repair on a diesel rail car parcels van and I'm just going to show you it now on the track with the with the other uh, diesel rail cars. We've got a little collection together which I'm quite happy with. I'll just turn you around. Right, so the, the two there, that's the maroon one is the one I've just been working on and that was basically a non-runner really but it was making a terrible racket and that's working now. The one next to it is a Daypole one, that's a brand new one. So all three are Hornby. The, the one at the back, the green one, I, I got as DCC but I've put a blanking chip in it for now and that had the Stay Alive in it as well which I've, all, I've retained it all and I'm going to fit that as and when I go to a section of DCC track. The other two are good running Hornby models. I can only run four, maximum four at a time. I can send them up onto the top loop and have them running there and isolate the top loops and then have them running around the bottom. So let's get them all running. What I'll do is I'll get the maroon one out first. And that's the one I was working on at the beginning of this video. Move the points around and let's get things going. I must probably start this the wrong way now. Oh no, it's looking. Right, so I'm going to send that up. That's going to go up onto the towards the top loop. And that's going to be lovely now if you remember what that sounded like. And that is on full power by the way. Okay, what I'll do now, I'll isolate that. going around on its target so what I'll do now is I'll get one of the other ones out from this side and send that up onto the top loop okay that's on its way up to the top I've moved the one I sent up to the top earlier onto the inner loop okay there's the two on the top that's a lima and a horn beak going on the top. the two loops at the top isolated and what I'm going to do is transfer that onto the inner loop. I'll get one of those two out and send that onto the outer loop. And that'll be up, that'll be four running. So I'll get the green one out. Turn it up onto these points. To the outside. Points here. It's on its way. That's going to come out onto there. Let's see if we can get a shot of all four passing this point here with the one parked up.
I do like these. This is the one that I uh, run in sweet as a nut. So that's a good result, that. I'm going to slow that down a bit. Right, that's a great result. That's a Lima parcel van back on the track um, after being a bit of a basket case. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.